and thank you for coming. I am Leo Sosa, the Executive Director for Deaf Mission, and I'll be your host for tonight's graduation. We're very excited about this event because this is our first joint graduation of three Deaf Mission cohorts in partnership with the City's Digital Equity Pilot Program. Before we get started, I want to take a moment to acknowledge all the organizations that have supported this program for the past three and a half months. The City Administrator's Office and the SF Committee on Information Technology, the Latino Community Foundation, the Mayor's Office in Housing and Development, the Mission Economic, sorry, the Mission Housing and Development, the Office of Economic and Workforce Development, Microsoft, Mission House and Development Corporation, FR Arch Consulting, San Francisco House and Development Corporation, and we're very thankful that you're here today. To get things started, please welcome our first speaker, City Administrator Naomi Kelly, to give the opening remarks. Good evening and welcome to City Hall. I'd like to thank, uh, well, first of all, congratulations to all the graduates, your, your friends and your family members. And thanks to Dev Missions Executive Director, Leah Sosa, because without you in this partnership, this wouldn't be happening today and this is be very beautiful to see, uh, see all you graduates today and hear about what you've been working on. I'm delighted to have you all here to celebrate the graduation of our first cohort of the San Francisco's Digital Equity Youth Program in partnership with Dev Mission. The high tech sector has become a major source of economic growth fueling the San Francisco Bay Area and the US. The high tech sector has also impacted how we communicate, access information, distribute products, address, and address critical societal problems. Because this is a source of increasing number of jobs, it is, in, in, it is particularly important that there is a sufficient supply of workers and it, with the appropriate skills and the appropriate credentials, and we also must make sure that there, it, we have a diverse tech workforce. And so, as such, San Francisco created the San Francisco Digital Youth Equity Program, which is a citywide initiative to ensure all residents have the tools and abilities to participate in the tech sector. And you ask, why is this important to us? Because employment in computer science and engineering is growing at twice the rate of the national average. These jobs tend to provide a higher pay and better benefits, and they have become more resilient to the economic downturns than other private sector industries over the past decade. In the pilot year partnering with Dev Mission, we we plan to expand, we, we work to expand the innovative youth technology training programs at Valencia Gardens, Robert B. Pitts, and Hunters Point West. Over the past several months, young adults in each community dedicated long hours in the evenings, after school, after work, to gain valuable skills in IT and programming to set themselves up for a successful career in the tech sector. I think that's very important to note that you took the time to do this and you all should give yourself a hand. A, a. And not only did you do this to help uh, gain skills for yourself, you contributed back to your communities, whether setting up Wi-Fi or, part, or helping uh, set up computers in, in the in building that you live. We are so proud of you graduates here today you are part of the next generation of technology innovators and builders, one that will be diverse, inclusive, and service-minded. And just as important, your success will be the inspiration to many other young people in your community. We have a great program planned for you tonight where you'll have the opportunity to hear from the partners and of course the graduates themselves. So let's continue on with the celebration in welcoming Abraham Velasquez, board and chair for Dev Mission. Thank you, everyone. This is definitely the fanciest uh, Dev Mission event we've ever held, so I appreciate the, uh, that we're trying to up the level. Um, I've been involved with uh, Dev Mission since the very beginning, which isn't terribly long, uh, but 
I kind of wanted to start off by giving you a little bit of information about my background and why I think this is, programs like these are incredibly important. Um, I was born and raised in Mexico City, and uh, I moved to the States at a young age. I was very fortunate in the sense that my mother was incredibly passionate and dedicated um, to giving me the tools of, and what I needed to do. You know, part of, part of those like tools really what, are what helped me um, grow and learn in all of these different ways that I had no idea were even possible. Unfortunately, a lot of these resources were not available in Mexico, so she decided it was imperative for us to move to the States. I grew up in Chicago um, really just admiring computers and technology from the very beginning. Um, every time I would look at a computer screen in a library, it was just something that I almost felt this magnetism to. Um, and that bit of inspiration is just something that my mom clinged on to, and she helped me uh, get a computer, she helped me raise the money so that I could do that for myself. And from that moment on, I think I was maybe like around 10 or 12 years old when that happened, and from that moment on, like my learning, my growth, Technology's not that perfect. Hello? So from that moment on, um, my learning and my growth really accelerated at a pace that just wasn't possible um, when I was a child. But all of a sudden, in my teenage years, I was able to do so much more, right? Um, Steve Jobs once described the computer as like a bicycle for the mind. It's a way for us to uh, really leverage our skills and take them to the next level. Well, now we have uh, electric-powered bicycles, so those even take us even you know faster and faster as we move along our trajectory. Um, all of these tools are incredibly important, and had I not uh, been given the opportunity to dive into them to really understand them from the very beginning, uh, I don't I don't know that I would be doing what I did today. So, when I moved out to San Francisco five years ago. Uh, I was very fortunate enough that I was able to work with Apple. They covered my relocation. Um, these are all things of privilege that I'm very grateful for. Um, I worked hard for them. I felt that I deserved them, and I was able to come here. And then I was on a, one of those buses one day to shuttle us out to, uh, to Cupertino, and there were protests um, for those buses, not letting them out. And that's when it really hit me that um, even though I am a person of color, uh, I'm having a deep impact on the community, on, in Mission, where I actually lived, um, and I, that felt wrong. It was all of a sudden where something that I'd grown to really fight for and have this like really rebellious mindset, all of a sudden I was part of that problem. So why is it that some Mexican kid was brought into San Francisco to help out these big tech companies, to help them achieve you know, the record setting profits, when we have so much talented, uh, dedicated, passionate youth here in the city. Um, it's that kind of dissonance that has us working in Dev Mission, right? Because each one of you that grew up in San Francisco, that grew up in the Bay Area, um, just needs to be given the right tools to accelerate the learning and be, have that kind of potential. Um, because all of a sudden, you know, tech companies can't complain that they're, we, they need engineers, they need designers, they need people with all of these different backgrounds, and at the same time, the people of the mission and the people of San Francisco, they're the ones that are up in arms and ready to like take on those jobs. Um, it's that disconnect that Deaf Mission is helping to bridge the gap, um, and I'm incredibly grateful for that opportunity to be, to be able to help others. Um, I think part of, in terms of the curriculum and some of the things that we're specifically doing, uh, the reason that I love teaching and the reason that I love being involved with Dev Mission is because we don't approach the problems from a technology standpoint. It's not about talking to you about all these algorithms and data structures. It's about the idea, right? And whether it's that little bit of a kernel, whether it's a simple idea to, um, you know, develop an app around a vegetarian, you know, and vegan restaurants, or whether it's an app to help uh, others in terms of, like, getting resources around the community. It's that simple idea that, that we need to strive for and helping others that we need to push for, and technology just simply becomes a tool for that to happen. 
right? The entire world is changing around us and we need to create those tools to help others. Um, and I'm very fortunate that I'm able to help others build those tools and come up with those ideas. So um, if it weren't for Leo, if it weren't for all of the different mentors and teachers and everyone else who's involved in Deaf Mission, none of this would be possible, especially under these very fancy lights and these very fancy uh, landscapes behind me. Um, but thank you so much to everyone for being here. Congratulations to every single one of your stu the students here. Your ideas are what inspire me and what will inspire the rest of the uh, cohorts that are coming before, after you. Thank you. It's amazing to hear this story over and over again about Abraham. And at the end of the day, he really cares about the work that we do. He's been coming in all the time, working with you guys to make sure that you deserve the right education. So now, I'd like to turn it over to one of our very important partners for the work that we've been doing in San Francisco since we launched. Away from the launch time, I remember having great conversations about one day we wanted to launch this organization and reach out to Mission House and Development Corporation. And around that time, we had a really good conversation, and it's a great pleasure and honor to introduce you today to Marcia Contreras, Deputy Director for Mission Housing Development Corporation, to the podium, please. Good evening to all. I just felt like I just had my, the workout for the day coming out these stairs. First of all, I'd like to say what a beautiful day is today. It is not just because it's a nice weather. We had nice weather in San Francisco. God knows we don't get that very often here. But because I see the group of young men and young ladies right in front of me completing a program, a program that started, I believe it was beginning of this year or last year, when uh, Leo decided to launch his organization and when he came and had a brief discussion with uh, myself and the executive director of Mission Housing. At the moment, we had lots of ideas, and Leo was very excited. He's always excited, by the way. We all know him. He has lots of energy, very contagious, too. And we believed. We believed in his passion. We believed in his dream. We believe in what he can accomplish. We believe that what he had planned, it's something that was executable, and that would change so many, so many uh, individuals' lives. And that's why I'm so excited to stand up here and be with you celebrating. Um, some of you guys don't, haven't seen me or met me. I haven't been able to stop by uh, Valencia Gardens, which is where Deaf Mission is currently housed, and we're very excited to have them there. But I can tell you that I've been following each one of you guys through social media. Um, Leo is very, very uh, passionate about posting your progress, what you guys are doing every day, um, what you guys are working with the partners. Um, and it's just motivating. Every time I look at uh, every picture that comes through social media, it's very motivating and rewarding for us, which actually makes it very easy for us to continue to provide support to Deaf Mission. Besides being excited, I want to commend all of you guys here today because I know that it was a journey. It's a level of commitment. And we all know that sometimes commitments have a beginning and sometimes it doesn't have an end, right? Depending on where you are committed. If you decide I'm gonna get this done, if I'm gonna start this and I have a goal in mind, I'm gonna get to that. And that's where you're sitting here today, which is, by the way, I want to take a moment and ask everybody to give them a round of applause and you're gonna hear it throughout the night because you guys all deserve this round of applause for starting the program and completing it. So please join me. I also want to hopefully ask all of you guys to look around the room for a second. And don't forget the faces of the individuals that are here today. These are the individuals that believed in you and each one of you guys and knew that you can make it to the end. So if you don't know who your counterpart is, maybe next door, next, sitting next to you, 
or you don't know the person that's behind you, take a moment to say hello, because this is your community. This is basically the individuals that perhaps you're gonna be able to maybe work with, perhaps you're gonna be able to start an internship together, perhaps you're gonna call them when you need assistance and support, and we wanna make sure that you don't forget that we're here to provide that level of support. So with that being said, I don't wanna forget the family members. Can I see, can I get some hands up here for all the family members that are here supporting? Thank you so much for being here. You know, as, as, as a young individual, it's never easy to, to, to decide to do something without the proper support or the support systems that we're gonna need. And so I applaud each one of you guys for being here today and supporting your, your family member. I've seen uh, mothers, fathers, grandmothers, uncles, aunts coming through. And so we will encourage you to continue to support them as they begin their journey. I know this is just the beginning of many wonderful opportunities that are gonna be presented to you. And again, look for each one of us if you need any kind of level of support and again, thank you family members for being here and being so supportive to them. On behalf of Mission Housing Development Corporation and Sam Moss, our executive director, we want to congratulate each one of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marcia Contreras, for those delighted remarks. We're very thankful as well to have the ability to call Valencia Gardens, our home. We're at 360 Valencia. You're always welcome to come there and hang out with us. And we're very thankful to you, to Sam, and Mission House and Development Corporation for keeping us there. We appreciate it. All right. So now the moment is very exciting. This is a special talk for you guys, for the graduates. But before we announce our keynote speaker for the night, I'm going to give you a short bio about why she's here today. Melissa Powell is the Global Program Manager on Google's Developer Relations team, focusing on training, education, and outreach for software and hardware developers. She's been at Google for nearly six years and has volunteered with myself for five years. Last year, she graduated from Carnegie Mellon University with a master's in product design, focusing on entrepreneurship and IoT, which stands for Internet of Things and has been sharing the knowledge she gained with the students of DevMission. Melissa has long been interested in mobilizing the world's minds to solve some of our toughest global issues and encourages her students to be creators, not just consumers of technology. It is a pleasure to introduce today the keynote speaker, Melissa Powell, Global Program Manager from Google. Put your hands together, please. everybody. This is high up. <laughs> so I am not quite as eloquent as Abraham, so I'm going to be reading from my uh, little device here. Um, but I want to start off by, by saying that I'm so honored to be here today. And I want to thank you, Leo, for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, and I also I want to thank Jade, uh, David, and Brian. Jade's in the audience here. Uh, for helping to volunteer and teach the IoT curriculum this past spring. Uh, without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you so much. A round of applause. And I also want to take a moment to acknowledge the true heroes of tonight for their dedication, creativity, and excellence. Let's give the students of Dev Mitchin a big round of applause. So proud of you guys. You are the author of your story. I hope you realize this sooner than I did. Most of Dev Mission students know part of my story. You know that it took me six times to get into Google. But there's a lot you don't know about me. In college, I worked five part-time jobs. And honestly, I don't know which one I loved more. Um, from noon to 4 p.m. on Saturdays and Sundays, I was a tour guide at Safeco Field, which was Seattle's baseball stadium. 
And on days I didn't have class, and in the evenings I was a babysitter for around three to five different families. I was a certified as a medical interpreter and volunteered at a local hospital. I worked as a part-time bilingual preschool teacher, and on weekends I wasn't giving tours at Safeco Field. I was a waitress at a Spanish restaurant near school. I was really busy, but I was really happy. I loved who I was becoming and what I was working towards. In my undergrad, I got a degree in Spanish and Japanese, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my degree, but when I got into the University of Washington, all I knew about myself was that I loved languages and I loved to travel. I thought learning languages would get me a job that allowed me to do both, and I would live happily ever after. That's the way things work, right? I'm not sure if you've seen Charlie's Angels with Drew Barrymore, Cameron Diaz, and Lucy Liu, but there's a scene in that movie where Lucy Liu walks into a room and everyone stops what they're doing. And then switching from perfect English to perfect Chinese, she commands the entire room to do something of great importance, no idea what that was, and I remember thinking Lucy Liu was a badass. I imagined I would become Lucy Liu. <laughs> I remember telling my friends and family with great pride that I was studying Spanish and Japanese, and I loved the reactions I got. What do you think you'll do after college, people would ask. Oh, I'm going to become a legal and a medical interpreter. When I graduated, I applied to work as a linguist at a Seattle-based law firm. I was rejected. I even knew the partner of the firm. I was their babysitter. Maybe that was part of the problem. Maybe it was the fact that I had zero legal experience. Who knows? But at the time, I thought that maybe I'm not just that good at translation. And out of fear, I gave up. Then I came across a certificate program at my university. Nine months, I'd get certified as a translation project manager. And I thought, well, I love managing all my part-time jobs, which felt like a bunch of projects. And I love languages. Yeah, I think this could work. Right after I completed the program, I got a job in San Jose, and I dropped everything and packed up my little Honda Civic, and I moved to California. New city, new friends, new job. This was going to be awesome. Hated it. I worked for two years, and I remember coming home crying to my parents at least once a week. I was broke, alone, and overworked. My dad, in his unending wisdom, told me that I had the power to work less, that I was the one choosing to work 14 hours a day. He was so wrong. If I didn't stay 14 hours a day, all the balls that I was juggling would fall. Not one, but everything would come crashing down and I'd ruin the company. I finally gained clarity when I took my first vacation. Two years into the job, nearly to the day, well, I didn't take just one day, I took 14. And in the weeks leading up to my vacation, I was preparing my clients so they'd know who they could yell at, uh, contact while I was gone. And I was preparing all of my colleagues with pages and pages of documentation, status updates for all my ongoing projects. I was so worried about my colleagues. They were already overworked, and now they had to take over my burden. Also, I could go on holiday, not sure how I could do this for them. I was a nervous wreck. My team assured me it was all right, and I worked up the courage to power down my computer on that last day before my trip. And you know what happened when I got back? Nothing. I returned and realized the world didn't end. Not only that, but I asked my manager to let me only take back the larger accounts. Smaller ones were keeping me busy, but making me really stressed. And you know what she said? Okay. I helped onboard a new hire who would take over some of my smaller projects, and then I was free. I was free to reflect. I had had that feeling where you're drowning and scrambling, only to stand up and realize that you're standing in two feet of water. I wrote my resignation letter six months before I sent it. I was very determined to leave. And that's where the story you know starts. I applied to Google six times, trying to get in where I could. Prior to Google, I had dedicated eight years of my life to a career I hated. 
five years in undergrad. Yeah, it took a little long. One year in a certificate program and two years in a soul-crushing job. My job in 2011 was to convince Google to give me a fresh start. Google doesn't generally do on-the-job training. Now, don't get me wrong, they're all for continuing education, but usually they want to hire someone that has skills and experience that matches the role. After eight years, all of my skills and knowledge felt worthless, and I was starting over. The image of who I was was gone. My identity had become so intertwined with that story. Melissa the linguist, Melissa the medical interpreter, Melissa the traveler. All my past experiences lined up so perfectly to that career in translation. So I applied to Google six times. And eventually, after getting an AdWords certific certification and many drafts of my resume later, they let me in as an AdWords account manager. When I told my colleagues how hard it was for me to get a job into Google, some of them laughed. When I tell people what I studied and where I work, they look puzzled. Still to this day, it happens. Just last year, as I was at the first day of school of my product design master's program, during the dreaded classroom introduction, I had to say my name and what I studied in college. What? 10 years later, I'm still being haunted by this story. Turns out, I was one of the oldest students in the room, and I was the only person with a degree in language. I could feel everyone whisper under their breath, how'd she get in? This is the part that I've tried to practice through. I got in because I spent 20 hours a week for six months studying for the GMAT. I got in because I worked on my application every weekend from 9 a.m. to 3 a.m. the next day. I got in because I had mentors who supported me and my application and could endorse my work ethic with a letter of referral. I got in because I was determined to be there. I've always been envious of people who had a linear story. Um, they never wasted any time. They didn't have to add lengthy explanations as to how they ended up where they were. But the reality is, I don't know their story, just like they don't know mine. <sighs> Just take a breath. Thank you. <clears throat> there are so many layers that make me who I am. And when I decide to repeat a narrative that has been holding me back in the past, I'm only perpetuating that narrative into the future. And I was tired of having to explain away my background. I was tired of the confused looks I got when I told people my journey to Google. And I was tired of not feeling proud of myself. So I changed the narrative. I didn't make up a false story. I just looked to my future and decided to write the next chapter with a fresh slate. I finally realized I'm the author and narrator of my story. I pulled up my LinkedIn profile. At the time, I had project manager, waitress, volunteer, preschool teacher, and I realized I felt locked into what I had done. My life has bullet points. I felt I could only pursue a career that matched my past bullets. My resume was based on my past, but my past didn't align with what I wanted to do in my future. So I decided to do a thought exercise. I would write my future resume. I reread my LinkedIn profile, which was purposefully vague, to try and make it so that my history could somehow fit under this broad umbrella. And I could see why people were confused. I was confused. And I couldn't put my finger on who I was. I opened a blank document, and I saved the document as my story. And I started by writing what I want my bio to say. Melissa is self-taught in the discipline of human-centered design and has led hundreds of design thinking workshops. Wasn't true at the time. Impacting thousands of people around the world. Also not true. On issues ranging from access to water to services for the hearing impaired. She discovered her passion for UX and design when she first attended Google's Sprint Master Academy, but has long been interested in mobilizing the world's minds to solve some of the toughest global issues last part is true. 
I listed the skills I had at the time and realized my list of past experiences was incomplete to achieve this future goal. So I started writing a wish list of skills. I wrote the skills and job titles I wanted to be associated with. I wrote a list of the initiatives I was going to create. I read about my favorite leaders from Richard Branson to Brene Brown, and I added to my list. Equipped with this new narrative, I had a new North Star. I felt so much clarity about who I was and what I needed to do next. We all have that voice inside that creeps up telling us all about our shortcomings. We haven't done enough to be considered a insert the blank, a software engineer, a doctor, an executive, but your story isn't over. So as you go into your next chapter, know you can't be defined by something you haven't yet done. Know your story is not only a recount of what you've done or haven't done, but a rather a tale of endless possibility. Thank you for giving me the honor to be part of your story for this very short moment in time and congratulations on what you've done so far. And I can't wait to see what happens next. Thank you, Melissa, for being our keynote speaker for this wonderful graduation. And now we're gonna jump into having some of our funders that have been supporting the work that we've been doing since we launched. The first one is Scott Mavis, the Director of Technology and Civic Innovation at Microsoft. The microphone is yours. Hi, well, I, I all too want to start off by congratulating the graduates and their family and their supporters. It's really a, a, a great occasion. Um, I look after Microsoft Cities program, and a lot of our work is really rooted in the company's mission which is empowering uh, people all over the world to, to achieve more. Um, and historically, a lot of that work, for, as we particularly look at communities, has been based really at national organizations, Year Up, Boys and Girls Clubs, DigiGirls. And a couple years ago, we took a look at that and said we need to do a lot more work with actual on-the-ground community organizations. And that's really when we started looking at folks like Dev Mission. And I just want to share with folks a little story about the, the so how special this organization is and how it compares to other places across the country. You know, we have a digital inclusion officer here that looks holistically across uh, the San Francisco area and how we, we make sure that everyone has access. We have organizations like Dev Mission who go out and don't not only build great programs, have great mentors, have great resources in the community, but they actually go do it in the community where people live as opposed to having them go off to some other location. And the impact of that is dramatically different from what we see across the other cities we work in. And it's really a shining example of not only what the organization in Leo has built here, but also just what San Francisco as a whole has, has accomplished. So I want to be really brief because I want to get on to the main program. But once again, congratulations to all of you, and congratulations to you for building a wonderful program. Thank you, Scott, for those wonderful words. It's amazing to realize that sometimes, as you communicate with funders, all you have in front of you, it's a phone. And having those wonderful conversations for the past, I think about four or five months, have been very exciting. So thank you for being here today, I appreciate it. And now we're gonna introduce another funder of Dev Mission. Uh, I know Christian for quite some time. He's been doing amazing work, primarily for Latino Community Foundation. He's the policy director and I'd like to introduce you to Christian Arana. Great. Well, thank you so much, Leo. Uh, I also want to be brief in my remarks because I want to get to what Nora is about to say. So, uh, so, so yeah. So, Leo, thank you so much for, for inviting me uh, tonight. He, uh, Leo actually called me, uh, I think it was Wednesday, and he's like, yo, brother, do you want to speak at a, a graduation? I was like, I got you, man. I got you. So, uh, so it's, I'm very proud to be here tonight and celebrate all your accomplishments with all of you uh, this evening. Uh, you know, as Leo knows, and, and something that I'll tell the rest of you, I mean, the Latino Community Foundation, our, our sole purpose is to unleash the power of people, right? And so from the looks of it tonight, we're, we're unleashing a lot of power tonight, especially in this room uh, in City Hall. You know, I have to look back at, when, at my past graduations and... You know, I had this thought about, you know, we're not even supposed to be here, but we are. 
right? And so this is something that all of you should be very proud of, and especially your families, because theoretically, we shouldn't even be here, but we're out here, right? Uh, so there are two quick things I want to mention uh, to all of you tonight. Uh, the first of which is why the Latino Community Foundation supports organizations like Dev Mission and support leaders like Leo. Um, you know, as many of you probably heard, you know, there's, there's an ongoing discussion uh, here in this city and this country about the, the tech sector and how why it's so difficult to diversify the tech sector, right? But from the looks of it tonight, there's plenty of talent to hire from, right? The problem is, is that not enough people are investing in organizations like Deaf Mission or leaders like Leo or programs like this that which you can t uh, t partake in. Uh, and that's where we come in as a Latino Community Foundation. Um, we wanna make sure that we're unleashing that power, right? Uh, you know, through, on the one hand, civic engagement, political power, but also through the skills that you got through this program, right? There's a lot of power in understanding about coding, about networking, and all those things. Um, I also want to give a special mention to Martin over here, who's part of our San Francisco Men's Giving Circle. It was actually his circle that used their funds to help support programs like this. So I want to give a special shout out to Martin and a round of applause. <laughs> The, 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 second, uh, the second and last thing that I'll mention tonight is, um, you know, as, as I'm sitting here listening to all the speeches and probably what I'll hear from you, uh, the, the students tonight, is what are you going to do once you leave this hall tonight? And, and what, what happens tomorrow? What happens Monday? You know, this program taught you about coding. It taught you about computers. It taught you those soft skills and how to network, right? But how are you going to use that, you know, for the betterment of the world? You know, it's easy to say, I'm going to use these skills and go work at a tech company, work at Facebook, um, you know, Twitter, whatever it is, right? But for us at the Latino Community Foundation, you know, what we want to accomplish at the end of the day is how we use what we got and what we learn for the betterment of society. And so, as Leo mentioned, you know, I am the policy director, so forgive me for mentioning uh, the 2020 census. Um, we had a conversation about this at our gala last, uh, last Friday. Uh, as you probably may or may not know, I mean, the 2020 census is something where this country counts all people, right? And because we count all people, we make sure that cities like San Francisco, states like California get the political representation and the public dollars that we deserve, right? These are the taxes that we're paying in, right? We deserve to have that political voice, and we also deserve to have those resources come back for our communities to build roads, to build new schools, whatever it is. I, I mention this because of this is, the, this is the first census that's gonna go online, right? The Census Bureau had said that every single person in this country is gonna be able to, to fill out this form online. But me and you both know that we can't assume that every person has a computer, right? Let alone a smartphone. I was looking at the numbers this morning. Half of Latinos in this country don't have access to broadband at home. And so I, I, I mention this because as you leave this room tonight, with the skills that you have, this could be something where you use those skills that you learned in this program through the guidance of Leo to make sure that we're actually using technology for good, for helping our community. So much like the rest of my speakers, um, I I'm very excited to see what you guys will do with what you learn in this program. Uh, we're counting on you, right? Uh, I know that's a lot of burden, but it's gonna be because of young people that we're gonna get this done. So thank you very much. There you go. I heard they need a lot of help connecting people with computers to the census. So I guess we're going to have to use some of the young links that we have available to make that happen. Very exciting. Thank you, Christian, for making those remarks. And now the moment has come for the class speakers. This is exciting. We had a lot of conversations about who was going to be the class speaker for every cohort, from Valencia Gardens, from Robert B. Pitts, and from Harness Point East West. And it came down to the top three. But everyone should deserve to be out here speaking about your experience. So I encourage you tonight with the guests to do that. But we're going to start calling all the class speakers to come up here. And representing the Valencia Gardens Spring Cohort number three, we'd like to introduce Nora Aguayo.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nora Aguayo, and I am part of the Valencia Garden cohort. First and foremost, I would like to thank all our funders, sponsors, and um, executive directors for making our classes possible, as well as our instructors, our volunteers, and our engineers. So in behalf of our cohort, I say thank you to you. So my journey with Dev Mission began when I met two friends who mentioned the program to me. I honestly did not want to join the program because tech was never presented to me growing up. Um, and when I mean tech, I mean coding, hardware, IoT. Of course, I know how to use Instagram, Google, and navigate the internet. Just the basic stuff. Well, my friends kept pushing me and pushing me to join Dev Mission, so I decided to check it out. As soon as I step into the as soon as I stepped into Dev Mission, all I hear is, hey, welcome, I'm Leo. And he shakes my hand. Immediately, I felt welcome. I introduced myself to the cohort, and I took a seat. Leo then asked, Leo then asked one of us to write the agenda, since he loved to put people on the spot. You all know that. We started with introducing one another. And as we were going around the circle, I noticed one thing that was being said. And that was that not many of us were exposed to tech. Honestly, it was a relief. Because I didn't want to feel like an outcast. I didn't want to feel like I didn't know what was expected coming to this program. I am thankful for the opportunity to work with, it, with each and one of my classmates. Because I wouldn't have made it without them. Without their continuous support, we pushed each other to the limit and help each other to the limit. So thank you guys. I remember the first coding class uh, with Yaritza and Abraham, both our instructors, both our coding instructors, who I want to thank for taking the time of your busy schedule to come and teach coding class to the community. So thank you guys. We begin by learning the functions of both HTML and CSS and why things had to be so organized. I learned that the littlest, mist I learned that the littlest mistake, like a capitalized, capitalized letter in my code, could ruin the whole code. It's always the little things. Once we were confident with HTML and JavaScript, we went on to learning, I'm sorry, once we were comfortable learning HTML and CSS, we moved on to learning JavaScript, the hardest thing I had to do. But fortunately, we had such a great support system like Agnes and Francis, our volunteers, who came out every Thursday and helped us out. I was able to create a Zumba website to develop my personal brand. So not only did I grasp onto coding, I also learned how to develop my personal brand. I definitely want to continue to enhance my, code, my coding skills and eventually master JavaScript. Overall, Dev Mission has given me the tools and resources to pursue a tech career and create diversity within the industry. This is not the end. This is only the beginning to greatness. Thanks, to everybody. Thanks again, everybody who made this possible. Awesome, that's exciting to hear. And those two friends that um, Nora's talking about, they're sitting in the auditorium tonight, so I'm pretty sure you guys wanna find out who that is. So we're very excited to know they're here supporting you tonight as well. Let's go into the second class speaker. This is another community that we're very excited to launch our first pilot, which is Robert B. Pitts. And we'd like to introduce Rayana Anderson, please, to the podium to say a few words. I'm kind of shy today, but 
I'm going to keep it short and sweet. So I just want to say that I want to thank Dev Mission for giving me an opportunity to learn something new and get something out of it. Thank you, Rayana. That's awesome. Appreciate it. All right. And now we got a young man that, if I'm not mistaken, grew up in Hollis Point East. And when he joined the program, he wanted to be part of this diversity opportunity. And he was excited to hear that he's going to be the class speaker. Not to put him on the spot, but he's going to the prom afterwards. So I'm pretty sure he's going to have a great time tonight. So we'd like to introduce, from Hollis Point East West, Darian Dawson. Good evening, everybody. Uh, sad to say I'm not actually going to my prom afterwards, but uh, it's still a good day, because it is. Uh, my name is Darion Dawson, and I'm a student at the Dev Mission site in uh, Bayview Hunters Point. I would like to thank everyone for coming to celebrate our accomplishment and graduating from this uh, substantial program. I would also like to say thank you to all of the people who put time and effort into Dev Mission. Uh, I'm not really strong with public speaking, but for some reason, Leo saw the potential in me for me to speak in front of all of you today. Uh, when I was first introduced to Dev Mission by my cousin, who was a coordinator at the Hunters Point site, I felt that the class was going to be, uh, it wasn't going to be too hard, and it was going to be something I could be at ease with. In a short time of five days, I came to realize that the internship wasn't going to be what I expected and it was going to, I was going to have to take it serious. I don't know why, but I figured it, that, it was going to, uh, that I was going to be able to handle a 12-week program being that I only had a few weeks worth of technolog technological e education from my computer pro programming class at school. Instead, I found the coding at this program more challenging, which wasn't a bad thing. What it actually taught me was that I have to stay determined with my decision in deciding to part participate in this class and in becoming an official Dev Mission alumni. I felt that I should have taken, the opp taken this opportunity of a free class that would teach me knowledge on computers, which is something that the people I know don't know about. This program taught me to be more responsible with myself, and it also told me that Everything is going to be a struggle, but that doesn't mean you have to give up. At one point, I felt like giving up on the program because of my struggle with understanding the concept of coding. When I first began my uh, website app, I felt so lost and confused that I didn't want to finish it. I still haven't finished my app today, but I'm happier than what I was before. Now I actually feel like finishing it, and I also understand co code more each time I have a class which is why I want to especially thank Leo for giving me this opportunity. And I want to thank everyone who helped me and who was there. I now plan on using this knowledge to my advantage by continuing to develop my skills and hopefully I will use them for not only my benefit, but those around me. All right, those were exciting words to hear from our class speakers for the three programs. And we're very delighted that they're all looking forward to have some great opportunities starting as soon as early next week. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce a gentleman that I believe I met about a year ago. We had a good conversation and all of a sudden, we're building things. And he's very excited to know that tonight, we have the pleasure and also the wonderful opportunity to introduce you to Alex Bond, who's the Digital Inclusion Officer of San Francisco. Alex, the podium is yours. Thanks, Leo. So no offense to any other speaker, but I think I got the best job for the night uh, because it's my honor to announce the selections for the Community Technology Associate positions this summer. So this is a six-month internship uh, in partnership with the city and the Success Center organization that would provide young adults the opportunity and responsibility to, the, to be the main technology point person and expert in their communities. They'll maintain computer labs, they'll provide tech support to 
neighborhood residents, and they'll help their communities get connected to the internet. It's a very important role, and uh, it's one that will prepare them for a successful career in IT. Uh, we had a really uh, strong bunch of candidates that applied for this position, and they were definitely interested in it for the right reasons. Uh, let me quote one applicant. She said, I'm looking to gain not only the experience for my resume, I also want to give back to my community and teach others how to use technology to improve their lives. It's definitely the right attitude we want. In fact, I got a little surprise for you guys. Um, we had such a strong candidate pool that originally we only had three positions created, but our partner, uh, the Success Center, was so impressed by, by all the applicants that came through that they decided to create two more positions. So now we have a total of five all right, for this year. All right, so let's meet our CTAs. When I call your names, please step up so you have a nice photo op. You can have the lights on you. All right, uh, first we have Carmen Flores from Hunters Point East and West. Yeah, come on up. Get a photo op. Come on, Leah. You got to get in the photo op. All right, next we got class speaker Darian Dawson from Hunters Point East and West. Um, next, we have Michelle Young from Valencia Gardens. Next, another class speaker, Rayana Anderson from Robert B. Pitts. And finally, we have Stephanie Pescador from Hunters Point East and West. So, hope you guys are ready to work. Your position start in about a month, so enjoy your summers when you can. <laughs> That's it. Huh? Yeah, the picture over there. Oh, camera over there. Camera, picture, picture. The picture's over there. Camera over there. Yeah. Wow. That's exciting. It's amazing to sit here and realize that when I tell funders and sponsors and partners that we're creating the next generation of tech talent, for some of them it's hard to believe what we're doing. For some of them it's hard to believe that we're developing that generation with hardware skills, programming skills, and critical career skills. And tonight it's a testament because the city is really supporting the work that you're doing. I found out from Alex about the wonderful opportunity. And I remember I posted that position on Slack. Could have been up here. I'm going to leave it at that. But that's really what Slack is about. When Leo posts something and you're hungry, you're going to go and apply for that job. And this is just a great opportunity and a great testament to know that we have a great digital inclusion officer in San Francisco that's helping us bridge the gap. So I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much, Alex. Put your hands together. We're gonna introduce our last speaker for the night before we present the certificates. And she's here with us today. She's one of our biggest partners in the community, primarily the Western Edition, at Robert B. Pitts, Danielle Banks, Project Level Program Director. Please, Danielle, come up here. Good evening. I am so sorry for my tardiness, but I am here. I just want to say, um, I want to get a couple thank yous out to Leo and to Alex for being amazing, the Dev Mission team for being beyond amazing. You know, the patience it takes to be a young person and come up and then lead others. Zuri, I appreciate the whole team. I really appreciate what you're doing because you are inspiring the graduates of today to come back and do the same thing for the next person. It's all about reaching out and reaching back and bringing someone up. And this is what we're gonna to continue to do. I just wanna say I am so proud. <laughs> I am so proud of Rayana, 
Brianna and Deshana, who isn't here. Um, these three young ladies worked very hard. They had a lot against them. You guys all have a lot against you. Your friends, activities, life, high school, after high school life, I mean, work. There's so many things in front of you, but the, the fact that you guys stuck it out, kept coming class after class, even at times when you're like, I wanna go home, or I wanna go do this, it's, this, it's the willingness within yourselves that you guys kept pushing and kept getting up because it's not an easy thing to do. But I commend you for the hard work you have done and, and for pursuing it, not knowing what the future will lead to. Congratulations, Rayana, on the position. You very much earned it. I am so proud of you. I met you four years ago, and you were just a young girl. And now you're a beautiful young woman. And it, I'm not going to cry, <laughs> but it makes me that happy to see her in this position. And you know, we, you guys, all of us in this room could be somewhere else. But if it wasn't for somebody who looked out for you, who said, hey, here's the opportunity. If it wasn't for Leo to be there and motivate you, even if you didn't like it, I think you said um, he calls on you and you do it, you know, like unexpectedly. He's like, who's not paying attention? You. <laughs> but that's what you need. You need somebody who's going to keep pushing you and keep pushing you and never giving up on you. And I strongly encourage you to find somebody that's going to continue to push you and continue to motivate you and is not going to let you fall behind. So I just want to say congratulations. Thank you for having me. You guys are beautiful and amazing. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Danielle, for saying those extraordinary words. And we appreciate all the support you have provided, not only to Dev Mission, but also to our instructor, volunteers, and the youth here tonight. Well, the moment has come to recognize some of our partners, volunteers, and ultimately all of the graduates tonight. So I'd like to call on stage the following staff members for Dev Mission, Abraham Velasquez, Jaritza Perez, and Suri Gonzalez, please. Jaritza, okay, okay, great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the volunteers. A lot of folks don't realize that without volunteers, organizations will not be around. And we have an army of volunteers at Dev Mission that are so dedicated, so passionate, they spend the time to work with young people, even away from the regular schedule. They set up meetups, they set up conversations, and we will not be here today without those volunteers. So I'm gonna call each one of them, come up here please, and receive this certificate from our staff. We're going to start with Agnes Chu. <clears throat> okay. Carlos Maximiliano Gomez. Martin Encinas Leon. Hand it to him so we can take a picture. <clears throat> Francis Lee. Maria Medrano. <clears throat> Brenda Morales. <clears throat> Jay Morrell. <clears throat> David Ras. And Brian Sable. Put your hands together, please, for all these wonderful volunteers. Great. Thank you. You can take your seat. I appreciate it. And now we're going to continue with recognizing a lot of our partners that make this mission possible. And every time we have these graduations, so I'm excited to see that a lot of partners are still coming out and supporting the work that we're doing. Without them, there will be no deaf mission. Without them, there will be no young people graduating from the program. So we're going to recognize some of the partners tonight. 
First of all, we'd like to start with Naomi Kelly. So, Alex, you come here. <laughs> Mission House and Development Corporation. Project Level. Microsoft. Latino Community Foundation. Alexander Bond. <laughs> San Francisco Digital Equities Pilot Program. <laughs> I'm about to call this organization, but that's okay. They're probably going to hate me. Summertime, summer school. Drew, get up here, man. San Francisco House and Development Corporation. Success Center San Francisco. Is Ray here? Okay. All right. My Path, are they here tonight? Okay. Melissa Powell. And the last one is someone very special that for the past two months has been working with myself to make sure that we get access to this beautiful location, Lili Liang. Put your hands together, please, for all these beautiful partners. Thank you all. All right. And now the moment of truth has come for the graduates to receive the certificate. It's been a long journey for some of you, 144 hours, 12 weeks, Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays from 4 to 7, Friday's corporate side visits. And on top of that, some of you still have to come back next week to catch up on some hours. Some of you still have to come back to train residents how to get access to the Google Wi-Fi router through the relationship they have with Monkey Brains and the city of San Francisco. But away from all that, I'm very thankful that you gave us this opportunity to be here tonight. So we're going to call you. You're going to come up here, receive your certificate, and then we're going to take a group picture with all the graduates, please. That's very important. So let's begin. Nora Awayo. Alejandra Alfaro. Rayana Renee Anderson. Abdelatif Benterkia. Carmen Isabela Colorado Flores. Darian Dawson. Nayeli Ju. Woohoo. I was going to call somebody. Stephanie J. Pescador Peralta. Carlos Peterson Gomez. Christopher Reaping. Akmal A. Shah. Brianna Thomas. Deshana M. Whitfield. Michelle Young.
And last but not least, Giovanna Yoke. So with that said, I'd like everyone to stand up, please, to receive the Dev Mission 2018 pilot program between Robert B. Pitts, Valencia Gardens, and Hunters Point East West. All right, thank you. You can now sit down. It's been amazing to see this wonderful opportunity working together. So, we're about to wrap it up, and we want to make sure that after the graduation program, you enjoy some of the snacks that we have available and little appetizers. And also, please mingle around. Just a quick announcement. We have to leave by 7 o'clock. I'm not kicking you out. I'm just telling you. We have to leave by 7 o'clock. So we got plenty of time at least to hang out, take some pictures. Please talk to our partners, talk to the graduates, talk to our sponsors. We would like to make sure that everyone understands what we're really doing in San Francisco. So we always have a little tradition with our organization. We need someone to send us home. And we typically do it at the end of the class. Sometimes we're a little shaky, we don't do it. But most of the time you get what I call the powwow. So today, I'd like to introduce you to Leslie Canjura, a program coordinator, for our closing remarks for tonight. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here tonight. Um, I'm overly excited to share this moment with all of you guys. Um, over the past year, I've seen over 300 people, such as program participants, um, executive directors, industry professionals, um, en engineers, entrepreneurs, sponsors, and funders come together as a community. Um, pardon me, come together as a community to. Just pardon me. Okay, we've seen them come together as a community to join this organization's mission. Together we have worked and explored some of the latest curriculum and emerging opportunities for the Dev Mission students. Um, and they're not only here in the San Francisco, they're throughout the whole Bay Area. Um, we've seen and know that diversity is one of the challenges that is faced in the tech industry. And we've also identified the tools and resources for our young adults to be able to advance to the next level post-graduation and overcome those barriers. Tonight we have recognized these future leaders and the next generation of tech talent. I remember meeting Leo for the first time and he greeted me with a gracious smile and a firm handshake, something that even Nora could recall. Um, I was fully convinced that I was in the place that I needed to be. The summer cohort passed and I graduated and I was part of the inaugural graduation. And now I'm a program coordinator. I am grateful to see my cousin and a good friend and the rest of the cohort during this graduation. But this is, pardon me, but this is where it all begins, is with a single handshake or a smile. Although this is the end of this graduation, I'd like to leave you with an open invitation for you all to continue to stay engaged with Dev Mission and the youth of, of the next generation to help create the next generation of tech talent. Congratulations to the spring cohort. You've made it this far, but this is just the beginning of your new journey. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the closing remarks for tonight. And now we would like everyone to please mingle around, enjoy yourselves. And we have some appetizers on four tables. And we encourage you guys to take some photos. And on behalf of Dev Mission, our partners and our funders, we want to thank you for coming out tonight. Enjoy the evening. And we'll see you next week at Dev Mission. <laughs>